Today I'm going to show you what's inside of the Volkswagen 09G transmission and how it works. Now this transmission can be found in the Volkswagen Rabbit, Beetle and even the Mini Cooper and boy are they notorious for transmission failure. Now this is a 6 speed automatic transaxle for front wheel drive and this one's failed, it's out of an 08 Rabbit so we're going to tear it down just to see what causes these things to fail. Taking a quick look around this transmission you can see we've got our position selector over here as well as its sensor. At the front here we do have our input shaft speed sensor and at the bottom here is probably where the dip stick will go if you had that option. Here's our hookup for the valve body. At the side here is where the transmission would mount to the body of the car. At the back here we do have a transmission cooler which we're going to exchange coolant with the ATF. And at the back here you can see you've got the differential and that's where your axle would plug into. Of course the torque converter would live inside of the bell housing here which gets its rotational energy from the engine. Start to tear it down right at the top here with the transmission selector. The giant nut here. 22 millimeter socket. Just pop that sensor off. All right, next up, I'm going to see if I can get this cooler off. 10 millimeter hex. We get this mount off. Like, who uses a 16 mil socket, man? Turn this over so we can get to the valve body. Now from what I can tell, the valve body is actually the weakest part in these transmissions. That's what really causes it to go and it's actually pretty expensive to replace. They do make rebuild kits and stuff for it. So let's open this up. Now there was no transmission pan when I got it. And yes, there is a chunk of it that's actually missing, but that's how I got it. Here's the transmission filter. Okay, we got a bunch of wiring inside of here. To remove the valve body, there's a bunch of 10 mils everywhere. So I'm just going to start removing all the bolts I can see here. Now this here is where the transmission selector goes into the valve body here. I'm going to remove this nut. I'm just going to carefully disconnect these connectors here, making sure not to damage them. Now we can pull out the valve body. Now this valve body we're going to take apart in just a bit. Now inside of here I can see either a temperature or a speed sensor. There's a bunch of clutches inside of here that control the planetary gear sets. And then here's an accumulator with a spring. Next up I need to remove all the bolts that go around to take this top half of the bell housing off. I hate it when Volkswagen will do something like this. This means that you're going to have to get in here with a wrench or a ratchet because you can't get in there with the gun. Why couldn't they design this a little better man? We had enough space here. I'm going to get these ones off with wrenches. Hopefully I got all the bolts off now. And here's a look inside of the 09G. You can see we've got our standard open differential. There's a counter shaft over here. And on the input side here, we do have the oil pump. Right, let's see if we can get this differential out of here. Maybe. There we go. There's a nice bearing for it sitting in the casing over here. Looks like we've got a counter shaft over here. And that gear goes to the final drive. Alright, next we're going to remove the oil pump. Here's the oil pump. Now it is all contained in one housing. It's not actually integrated with the bell housing itself. And its input shaft is driven off of the torque converter. That way this transmission is always receiving fluid flow. Yeah, so there is this snap ring that goes all the way around here. You guys know how I hate snap rings, right? Now all of this is being blocked by this little shaft here, which is your gear selector shaft. That goes to the gear selector and then your parking pole. Take a, see if I can take a swing at the shaft here to push it out. Looks like there's some kind of construction going on over there. Sorry for the noise. Now this shaft here is going to come in and you have the gear selector down there. You can see it's got a bunch of a spring and then a bracket. And then it actually goes to the parking pole which is going to engage to this counter shaft which then would turn the final drive. Now I'm going to have to remove some of these mechanisms here in order to get this piece out so I can either press this out or I might just chop off the shaft here. Let's see. Now I should be able to pull this out. Yep. This is our first set of clutches. It's a snap ring with no ends. Alright, it looks like this guy can come out next. This is basically nestled inside of that one. There's a washer in here. I like this transmission. It's coming apart pretty easily. Yep. Next set of clutches. Looks like we got a plate here that's bolted on. So let me see if I can remove these torques holding this plate on. Alrighty. Oh, that kind of looks burnt up. Looks a little discolored there. And it's got the ring gear of one of the planetary gear sets in it that directly drives the counter gear over here, which will drive the final drive. Before I can get this guy out of here, I've got to remove the parking pole mechanism. Take this whole thing out of here. You can see this here is what's attached to your lever for your selection. And then this here is the actual tooth that's going to engage with the tooth here. I right, remove the final output speed sensor. And I'm able to finagle this guy out of here. This one is for the final drive and this one comes from the last planetary ring gear. Yeah, I'm kind of disappointed because I'm not seeing much carnage in here. I guess it's all in the valve body. Let's just take off this snap ring. 
this I don't need pliers for that. Look how they give you nice side access here above the valve body where you can just pry things and pull it out. Oh, my tools fell down. Anything happen? Oh yeah, a whole bunch of parts came out. So here we got another planetary gear set inside of there. Well, oh, it's got a lot of planets on it. And then there's this sun gear. This is cool. It's got the sun gear for the rear planetary. And this would be the sun gear for this planetary gear set. So it looks like we got two planetary gear sets here. And I think we might have a sprag here. Yep, this is a sprag gear. Basically, it's a one-way drive, so it only allows it to rotate one way and resist torque in the other direction. Just gonna remove the speed sensor. Looks like we got another snap ring. I like these snap rings because you don't need pliers for them. In the bin. Now I can pull out this clutch set. This clutch set looks brand new, buddy. It's gonna come out. Yep. Yet another clutch set again. Again, this does look brand new. It doesn't have any... It does have that paste on it though. There's one more snap ring in here. That's one last snap ring. And that holds the return for like a piston. Now this last little wall in here is actually a piston. The way you're supposed to get it out is by blowing compressed air through the correct hole over here. And it should just pop out with pressure. And that's pretty much it for the guts of the transmission. Now one thing to note is that if you don't have a transmission dipstick, they just put this plug over here, which is made of plastic, and on this side it's just pressed in. But if you had a transmission dipstick, obviously the dipstick would go into underneath the valve body and go into the pan, so you'd be able to read your transmission fluid and actually get a sense of how good your transmission is doing. And before I toss the case, it's just interesting to note the valve body will bolt up to the bottom here, and then we had our set of planetaries and clutches inside of this cage over here. In order to control those clutches in the planetary gear sets, you got to send fluid from that oil pump from the valve body which is going to decide what goes where into all of these holes that are machined inside of here because this is really going to redirect fluid to the correct clutch in order to lock it up and change your six forward gears and your reverse gear all right so next up we have the valve body now check out the amount of paste and stuff that's on top of this transmission you can tell that this fluid probably wasn't very healthy on this transmission and was carrying a lot of debris through it now the valve body is basically the brains of the transmission you've got eight solenoids two at the bottom here and then six across the top here. What they're going to do is take some of that fluid pressure, suck it in through here from the fluid filter, and then it's going to decide where it wants it to go to those holes that we saw at the casing, which are going to run along the perimeter over here, and that's going to lock up the appropriate clutches to give you the correct gear ratio. Now it does that through these little solenoids over here, which can all be computer controlled through these wires, and those are going to move these spool valves inside of here. So let's open this so we can see a little closer. Got a bunch of eights to take off. Maybe there's an accumulator in here. Bunch of springs in here as well. I'm gonna remove these bolts. Oh look, one of these solenoids fell out. That's what a shift solenoid looks like. This is a fluid temperature sensor. Here's another solenoid. You can see it's got a screen on it. And here's another one. Now when I flip this over, a bunch of these little buckets and springs came out of these little holes over here and that's because these are accumulators and what they do is that they hold fluid pressure for the next shift so that you have a nice smooth shift and it's not struggling to capture fluid pressure so now i've got a bunch of 10 millimeter bolts that i'm going to rip off here so we can take this valve body apart oh there's a lot of little stuff coming out of here it looks like a brain kind of a maze inside of there and there's a bunch of these little springs and buckets here they act as valves here's the gasket yeah this transmission fluid does not look very clean it's very dark brown it's kind of pasty it's always good to have your brother's graduation shirt on hand here so you can dab your hands on it because when you take apart the valve body it gets pretty messy more of these little buckets and valves falling off here and you can see there's more spool valves in there and you can see there's also this gasket it's kind of got its own circuit on there look how many little check balls and valves there are on here you can imagine when you're rebuilding this you have to put these back in their exact spot now this actually looks like a piece of rubber yeah it's kind of springy plastic actually that's pretty cool this one's got whoops that was a little filter and you can see this is the brain of the transmission it's got a bunch of different fluid redirects for different circuits you can basically think of it like a printed circuit board but a physical one that you can actually see and understand i never could understand electronics this is the bottom half here again you can see there's these little valves that springy up and down now out of all of these this is the only manual valve which actually comes from the park reverse neutral drive lever and that's going to redirect some of the fluid in the transmission to tell it which direction to go all oh, this mess 
My table is getting messy. I found a little valve here that wants to come out. Oh, this is made of plastic. Yeah, but it's still kind of pasty. And of course, there's probably the spring for it. And there's this piece here. Whoa. And the spool part. So what's getting me is I'm trying to pull out these solenoids and you can see there's a little pin inside of there that's wiggling with it. So I'm assuming you gotta press down on that, but when I do, but when I do, it doesn't really help. It doesn't release the solenoids, so I'm gonna have to figure out a way to get that out. Yeah, that pin went flying. Well, I broke it. Not exactly what I was looking for. Let me know if there's a better way to take these out. I'm pretty sure you should be able to change these out without changing out the whole valve body. I'm also wondering if these little hex keys here are actually adjustments for these valves to make it shift a little bit better, provide a little bit more fluid pressure. Now these solenoids are basically a giant coil that's going to build up an electromagnetic field when you apply electricity here. And that little thing in the middle there is just going to pop out and that's what's going to move the spool valve inside of here. Now the valve body on these are actually the main failure point as I have mentioned earlier. Now this was actually designed by Ace and Warner as opposed to ZF which designs most other Volkswagen automatic transmissions. Now the main reason why these fail is basically all these valves and spools inside of here. Sometimes they get stuck or sometimes the other way around they just get worn out inside of them and inside of the bores here will start to wear out. Now when you wear that out your piston is no longer going to fit inside of there properly and smoothly and you're going to have a loss of fluid pressure. When you lose fluid pressure, it's going to cause harsh shifting. The most common complaints for this thing is a harsh shift between 1 and 2 or 2 to 3. Of course, if your valves aren't working properly and they start to shift or move when they're not supposed to, that's going to cause a reduction or an increase in the line pressure that goes to the correct clutch. And that's how you're going to have bangs and slips or things that slip and then bang. Now additionally, these valves could also get stuck and that's enhanced by the fact that you have dirty fluid running through here which isn't really going to help. Now I don't recommend that you do the lifetime service of never changing your transmission fluid. Always change your transmission fluid. Double the time recommended if it's 30k or 40k. Definitely a good improvement in the shift quality and of course the lifetime of your transmission. Now in some cases you might be able to get by with a proper fluid change, maybe some additive but also changing some of the solenoids and cleaning them out. Some of them have screens inside, but this one actually doesn't. In other scenarios, you might just have to swap out the valve body, which luckily isn't a terrible job because you can just drop the transmission pan and get it out. Now you can rebuild these and they do sell a shim kit or a rebuild kit, but if you get the original one from Volkswagen, chances are you might end up with the same problem down the road. Here we have the transmission oil pump. I'm gonna take it apart just real quick to see the condition. I'll just lift this off here and as you can see, we do have this star gear kind of oil pump. Now how this works is the gear in between here is going to be moving elliptically which is driven off of the torque converter and that fluid is going to come in and get squeezed in between these gears here and pushed out. This would be your output and this is your input. You do see some of that pasty kind of material run through here. Now here's a layout of all the components inside of the transmission starting here from the input shaft working all the way out to the output over here with the counter gear. We're going to just quickly take this apart so we can have a quick look at the condition of this transmission. Now I've already made another video on how automatic transmissions work so you want to want to check that out linked above so you can learn your alphabets of transmissions. Now starting over here at the top we do have a return spring but you'll notice that coating of pasty stuff is all on the outside here. Just pull this apart here and see we do have a clutch on the inside here. Now this clutch looks very clean inside of here. It doesn't seem to be burnt up or anything and looking inside of here you have a cool looking gear. I think I'm going to keep that. It looks like a nice souvenir for my co-worker. And then I'll pop this guy apart here and inside of here we have a planetary gear set. So this gear is in fact the sun gear and we have the planet carrier with the little planet gears inside and of course we have the ring gear for it. Now one thing you'll see is that there's these holes over here and that's where fluid actually goes in and then activates various clutches along the shaft. And another set of clutches in here. I feel like there's more clutches than gears in this thing. This is actually a piston assembly. You can see that that's the piston seal inside of there and that's going to press up against these clutch in order to lock this against the thing that's toothed here which is actually this guy. Next up we got another set of clutches over here. Again, these all look in pretty good condition. I don't see any catastrophic failure with like a clutch falling apart. Next up here we do have this sprag bearing. Check out there's a little spring inside of there which allows you to rotate it in this direction 
However, when you go in that direction, it gives you resistance, so you can't rotate it that way. Now, this is good for like engine braking. Say you want to apply torque in one direction, but you want to freewheel in the other direction, and well, that's what this will do. You can also think of it like your back wheel and your bicycle. All right, so it looks like the guts of this is actually inside of this piece over here. So here you can see this will actually be the sun gear. There is a planet carrier over here, which is actually shared with the planet carrier over here. So this entire thing will rotate, and the sprag bearings pressed on top of it. You can see inside of here how unique it is because you have two different size of planets inside of here and that's because the sun gear on this side is smaller than the sun gear over on that side because this one engages with the planet carrier on this side now at the back here you can see we do have another piston it looks like and you can see its clutches inside of there as well as the clutches over here almost look pretty much brand new so I don't really know where all this pasty substance is really coming from. Of course, at the back of the transmission, we already saw this is the ring gear and the counter shaft that engages with the differential. Now, speaking of the differential, this is just a very simple front wheel drive open differential. I do have a video on how these work linked above. And that's a look at the 09G transmission from Volkswagen. Now, if you do have one of these, I feel sorry for you if your valve body starts to go. However, the rest of these mechanically actually do look pretty good and very simple and quite nestled together for a six speed transmission mission I would have expected a lot more inside of here now make sure you subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this one check out this little scrap wood table I made just for this teardown video